a film that's described as Bambi meets Apocalypse Now meets the Bible. Yes, this sounds like a film I'm going to like. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm here to talk to you about Unicorn Wars, which is coming to theaters on March 10th, 2023. It's a Spanish animated film that is coming to American theaters thanks to G-Kids. And my hot take is, look, I, I definitely think you should watch it. This is, it's just such a beautiful, vibrant, horrible, and ultimately unique film that touches on a lot of subjects. And it's just something you're not going to see anywhere else. There's a Spanish animated film that just feels so different and so special. Uh, definitely not for everyone, but if you have any interest in a film that's described as Bambi meets Apocalypse Now meets the Bible, do yourself a favor, check it out. It is something that just has to kind of be seen to be believed. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the film, a few things I liked, one thing I didn't like, and then briefly talk about the ending. Uh, so there will be spoilers during the ending section. I will be very clear when that happens. So in Unicorn Wars, you have uh, kind of the eternal conflict between the teddy bears and the unicorns. People that you would normally think would be friends, They're, they were residents of this magical forest, and now the teddy bears have been at war with the unicorns forever. Now imagine like, Things that look like this, cute, cuddly teddy bears that are going through Apocalypse Now, full metal jacket type army boot camps uh, to prepare to fight the unicorns. They, uh, the film has just such a unique style, a unique feel to it that just really kind of catches on from the start. I loved it. It really kind of, it starts with this beautiful, like Bambi-esque magical forest type look and then quickly goes into a more horrible look, but that is part of the appeal of this film. And so these bears are training for an operation to go into the magical forest. And when they get in there, they experience the horrors of war and so, so much more. So things I liked about this movie. The first is the animation. It's an animated film and it looks like an amazing high quality animated film. Like it is bright, it is vibrant, it is beautiful, and it is very, very well done. Like the animation looks very professional. It is uh imaginative and it really will like tells the story in just such an impactful way like you are grabbed from the very start like i mentioned it starts in more of like a happy magical forest type scenario and then you get into kind of more of the meat of this film and it just grabs you from the start and pulls you in the second thing i loved about this film is i originally wrote the strangest but i'm gonna go with the uniqueness like this is not something you're gonna see anywhere else like i don't imagine that this film would have been made in america or at least made with these kind of high quality animation that it has now it just feels like something that is completely out there like i said you've got the combination of bambi meets apocalypse now meets the bible there are war themes there are kind of classic fantasy type themes there are biblical themes they're all mixed together into this very special animated pot that uh just kind of overflows with colors and blood and gore and just i was smiling and cringing but mostly smiling the entire time the third thing i really love is just the imagination like this is, i feel like all these points are kind of the same but this really does feel like something that uh is just so special and imaginative that you're not going to find it anywhere else it really is kind of like a childhood fever dream, like a, a really demented child's fever dream, but a childhood fever dream nonetheless. And I like how it riffed on various themes and brought them into this world. Like, uh, you know, one thing I love is like the boot camp is a military type boot camp, but you still have like classic teddy bear kind of care bear type theme. So the they're training to kill unicorns and they're using arrows with like heart shaped arrowheads at the very end, like kind of like a Cupid arrow to kill the unicorns. They're, they're going through muck and like crawling in mud under barbed wire with like rainbows in the background. All the, all the uniforms look like military type uniforms and their medals are like bright colors and like rainbows and things like that. Like you get this really interesting merging of these very different themes and it's it's just such a such a wonderful world and terrible world to be in and the last thing i loved and again this all kind of fits with the same general concept is it's really weird and i love that i love that this is such a unique weird film i love that this is something that you kind of you can only do in animation you could probably only do in like a foreign animated film i don't i don't 
maybe this film could be made in America. I feel like it would be tough and it'd be tough to do uh, with this scale. I talked to the writer, director, uh, slash art producer, Alberto Vasquez, and he, he mentioned that he got support to make this from both like, I'm just going to hold this guy. He keeps falling. Uh, he mentioned that he got support from like the Spanish arts uh foundation like some sort of public art fund and various television studios that recognize that this is like an artistic endeavor and something that should be supported and it shows like you can see how high quality it is and how strange it is and how like wonderfully twisted it is it is just so weird and so kind of niche that i'm I'm just very glad that it exists so I kind of said the same thing four different ways, but uh, things I didn't love as much. Well, you know what? It's kind of the same theme. It, it is a little weird. There are some weird themes involved in it. Uh, you know, they didn't detract from my enjoyment at all of this film. I really loved it, but there are some interesting themes. There's a, there's some sort of like, there's some weird, like familiar relationship issues. There are uh, some, there's some you know humor involved with like poking fun at people and things like that. It all fits, and I ultimately love this film, but it was there, there were some things that were just a little bit too weird for me, but you know what? It did not take away from my enjoyment of the film. So I'm going to go into the ending of this movie because it is just such a strange trip, but uh, if you don't want to know what happens, I would turn it off now. Just know that Unicorn Wars comes to theaters on March 10th, 2023, so definitely check it out. It is something that you will definitely want to see. So going into the ending, like I mentioned, you have this kind of platoon i think is what the word would be of bears that are training to go on this operation of the forest and they are not the best recruits uh the the uh higher ups recognize that but they just need them to go in there as they said collateral damage just to kind of go in and um attack the unicorn so these troops who are just kind of going through basic training now are on a mission into the unicorn forest and it does not go well as you would imagine there's uh, there's hazards in the forest that are not unicorn related and there's hazards that are unicorn related. Eventually after, uh, some people die after a drug trip, uh, because they eat these like rainbow colored worms that just cause them to like trip out on LSD, which is one of the most interesting scenes in the film. And I'm going to put a picture up of like what it kind of looked like. It is, that was just a crazy, crazy scene. Eventually you have three, you, you have three teddy bears left. You've got, um, Bluey. Uh, and Tubby, who are who are brothers, Bluey is like a blue bear, Tubby is like a pink bear. They have like familial issues because Bluey was more loved by his father, Tubby was more loved by his mother, and Bluey did some terrible, terrible things because of that. And then you have Coco, who is kind of the, like the best bear of this group. He was appointed the leader, but he gets injured during one of the last unicorn fights and is having trouble. So Bluey, who has kind of had this need to be best and also this horrible violence streak that comes every once in a while he's also a terrible brother he is just a terrible terrible character but he's supposed to be he ends up killing coco and that is kind of the last straw for tubby and so tubby kind of abandons him uh, eventually bluey kind of becomes like a golem like character who's like following him around because he can't really survive on his own and tubby is kind of adapting to the forest so tubby is like giving him food and things like that Eventually, Bluey attacks one of the unicorns. He sees one, another lone unicorn, and he attacks it, tries to kill it, but he is pushed off a ledge. He falls down, and eventually you see that Tubby is, like, taking care of the unicorn and, like, nursing him back to health. Bluey was eventually found. He survived somehow and was taken back to the military base. And is now like promoted to the rank of lieutenant and is like made a symbol of the war because he was horribly disfigured, but he's the only known like survivor of this group. So he was like someone that had gone in, he killed unicorns, he was like a, a like role model for the new recruits, and he gets this like crazy outfit with this like hockey mask type thing that covers his horrible disfiguration. And he becomes like a leader in the in the base, but also he becomes a very strong character. Now, eventually, he orchestrates a coup uh, of the military and takes over and declares, like, a full-on war on the on the unicorns. And that leads to this fi big final battle between the unicorns and the bears in this horrible, bloody, giant battle. And so at the very end of the battle, you have essentially the unicorn that Tubby had been taking care of. It's injured and crying out, but Tubby and Bluey recognize each other. And at this point, the battle is mostly over. And I loved 
this scene because what had been like a vibrant beautiful forest is now just like gray and the only color on the battlefield is like the red of blood so it's a, it was a nice contrast between what the forest was when you were in there earlier and and what the forest is now but we see that like the unicorn that tubby had been taking care of is injured tubby sees bluey he kind of sees the horror that has been done to him bluey like takes off his mask to show him you finally see what bluey looks like and he's like a two-faced kind of character like literally half of his face is like gone but Tubby hears the other unicorn cry out, and so he goes to like care for him because he's been caring for this unicorn, and that makes Bluey intensely jealous. He has always been a jealous person, um, even when he was a kid, and so he takes a rock and just bashes Tubby on the face, on the head, and like Tubby falls over, is like bleeding from the head, and then Bluey sees the baby unicorn that Tubby was going to, he kisses it, and then kills it. And he starts eat, devouring the unicorn. So he is trying to fulfill this prophecy where it was like, apparently the last, the, the bear that eats the last unicorn or drinks the blood of the last unicorn will like rise up as like the chosen bear. And Bluey has always wanted to be that bear. He's kind of like tried throughout this movie to be that bear. Now that he's killed the last unicorn, he eats it, tries to devour its flesh to get its blood. And in the ultimate of ironies, he chokes on it and like keels over and dies. So that is kind of how the overall war ends. Now, uh, now what happens is like the baby unicorn dissolves into this like blood creature that we've seen a little bit more. It's kind of been an antagonist trying to like take out the the unicorns throughout. It, it, it rises out of the unicorn. It consumes Tubby. Then it consumes Bluey. It looks kind of like the Spirited Away creature, the thing that was in Spirited Away that like devoured everything. Uh, it kind of looks like that. And then it coalesces into a, a man-like shape. There, there was a third faction in this film that didn't really have much of a role in the war. There were the, there were the monkeys. They kind of lived in this like gothic cathedral, essentially, uh, and, and looked after this blood monster. But now that this man shape has taken form, starts walking, all the monkeys start following it. And they kind of form this long line. And I guess now you can usher in the modern age with man. So that is the ending of Unicorn Wars. It is a strange, beautiful, wonderful, horrible film that I definitely think you should check out. It comes to theaters on March 10th, 2023. And thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content comes straight to you. And also check out my interview with Alberto Vasquez, the writer, director, and art director of this film. If you want some more insights into how this film was made and kind of where this concept came from. So thanks so much. So if, and if you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.